What is up everybody and welcome to another video. In today's video I wanted to talk a little bit about the Vulp and the uh, state of it right now. So um, we are starting to actually get Vulps into the hands of like reviewers. Obviously we've been getting them into the hands of people which is super cool to see but uh, alongside that I actually had a very large list of people that uh, we sent a Vulp to because I wanted their feedback. Um, I thought that you know, sending it to as many different Balasong creators as possible would be great. I think we sent it to like almost 40 people. <laughs> so a lot of Vulps were sent out, be it to makers or uh, Balasong reviewers and stuff like that. And one of those people was uh, NRB, or I Am Not A Real Boy, um, NRB Knife and Design. Uh, used to be a really cool presence here on YouTube, now is a full-time Balasong maker, makes awesome stuff, and provided some really, really good feedback. Same thing with Den Den BMX and upcoming uh, stuff from Camaro EE and Telestro and stuff like that. So there's there's lots of, lots of stuff coming about the Vulp. But um, now that it's released, now that it's out in the wild, we're getting feedback, which is extremely important because it's going to help us kind of improve the Vulp over time. Um, now, here's the thing to note. There, there's two things here. First of all, we do want to improve the Vulp. We want to make it as good as it can be. However, the second thing to note is that it'll be as good as it can be for the price. So 60 bucks is how much it costs. And so uh, we can only make it so good and keep it in that price range. And so uh, I wanted to go over a few of the changes that we are now working on for the Vulp. Um, that should be implemented in the next batch, if not, um, and if not this next batch, then the batch like after that. It's, it's happening soon. We just, we have a lot of them to make and a lot of stuff going on. So yeah, bear, bear with me. As I said, I don't fully know the release schedule here. I'm trying to synchronize with Nibali's as much as possible, but that's all to say the Vulp is happening. We're, we're, it, it's going, man. We're, we're updating it. Um, but... Let's talk about that. So, uh, the Vulp is pretty good um, in a lot of ways, and a lot of people really like a lot of different things about it. Um, and one of the ways that I believe is a great signifier that I've made a good product is um, I've heard a lot of conflicting opinions about it. Uh, which is to say that I've heard people say that the handles are um, slightly too handle biased for them. I've heard people say that the handles are not handle biased enough for them. Um, I've heard uh, many different opinions about the way that this thing should be uh, changed, like flipping and balance wise. And the fact that most of those opinions from most people are generally almost completely opposite is actually a very good sign, because it means that uh, I don't need to <laughs> really worry about it fitting um, a mold of being a good flipper to a lot of people because most people say, oh yeah, it's a good flipper, but I would change this small thing or this small thing, and they all have different opinions on the small thing they would change, which in my eyes means that it's pretty well done. <laughs> if, uh, if, if people are not in agreement about what they would change, um, I think that it means that it in general is pretty good. However, there is one thing that almost everybody is in agreement about with the Vulp, and I think it is the most important thing when it comes to actually fixing this knife and making it the best that it can possibly be for the price. And that thing is the uh, hardware. The hardware on the Vulp is okay right now. It is not very good. It is like bare minimum okay, but it's not great quality, um, and there's a number of reasons for that. First of all, it's T8 hardware, which is pretty small. Um, I prefer T10. Uh, and then, on top of that, the screws included in this first batch of Vulp, I guess, weren't actually hardened, uh, which I wasn't aware of, so that's going to be something that's changing. Um, so they're very soft, so they're easy to strip. They're T8, which makes them even easier to strip, and uh, that's the problems with the screws. And then on top of that, you have problems with the bushings themselves. Um, NRB was really kind when he pointed out exactly what he would change about the bushings, so he uh, actually talked about like how he would improve the outer diameter of the bushings to slightly fit the blade better, and how we could improve our tolerances by improving the bushings. And then finally the washers, just making them a little bit higher quality out of the box. And so, we are implementing these changes. So a few of the things that we're doing, right? 
first of all, we're making the screws T10. So the screws will be T10. I don't know if this very next batch will have T10, um, but even if they don't, they will at least have hardened screws. But if they do, uh, they'll be T10 and hardened. So very good <laughs> on that front. Uh, so the T10 is a, is a big deal. That's gonna be something that I'm very excited about. On top of that, we're also increasing the quality of the bushings. So the bushings are gonna be higher quality. They're gonna fit in the blade much better. We're increasing our tolerances there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. Uh, on top of that, I believe we are also uh, making sure that the washers and fitment is better. But the problem that comes with increasing the tolerances and how accurate the bushings are and how accurate the fitment is and all that, it means that the Vulp, which is already pretty hard to put together, will become even harder to assemble, okay? Um, because of all of these problems. But we've also come up with a solution for that. So this is very exciting. I don't have it with me, but I'm gonna open a box to show you what was included previously and how that's changing. So um, we've got our little L tool, and then we've got a little Torx bit inside of here, okay? Now the Torx bit that was originally included was just kind of a normal, generic, okay quality T8 Torx bit, okay? It's not great, it just, it works. <laughs> um, however, in the new version, what we're gonna be doing is something very interesting. So it's inspired by my method of assembling the Vulp. So what I do when I take apart the Vulp and then want to reassemble it is I actually use the L-shaped tool and you can see this in my Vulp assembly video. Um, which is on this channel. I take the tool and I insert it through the pivot to help align everything. The problem is though, is that this tool is very thin. So it only helps a little bit. Like it helps you get in there when you have everything initially put together and then kind of get it more in line, but it's not perfect. However, what we're gonna be doing is creating our own custom Torx bit. That'll be a T10 Torx bit. And that T10 Torx bit will have, so it'll be a bit like this. I'm gonna open this up to kind of show you the idea here. It'll be a bit like this, but it's elongated, okay? So it's actually, it's like this, but it's longer. And where it's elongated, it'll be the perfect thickness to fit into the pivot, okay? So the idea behind this is that you can take your Torx T10 bit and use it after you've used the little L tool to kind of get it started. Then you can take the T10 bit and push it through and it will align everything. And then you can take that out and put the pivot in. Now, uh, this is similar in the idea to uh, Indiana John's pivot needle but uh, there's still actually a good reason to get the pivot needle itself. And that is that the pivot needle allows you to actually attach the pivot to the other end and then push the entire thing through so that when you're done, the pivot is just in there. Um, this will not do quite that job, but it'll still get you most of the way there in terms of aligning the pivot inside of your Volp completely and then allowing you to easily insert the, uh, the actual pivot itself. So. Yeah, that is extremely exciting to me. I, I cannot wait for that to be finished. Um, I don't know what the time is on that. It's a fully custom piece of hardware, so that's gonna be something that we have to deal with. But yeah, uh, that's another one of the things that's gonna be upgraded and coming in the box. So there's a lot happening with the Volp. And something to note here is that unfortunately, because of these upgrades, it is kind of hard to keep it at the same price. And so the Volp, unfortunately, will be going up in price. However, it's only going up in price $5. So instead of being $60, it's gonna be $64.99 or 65 bucks, let's be real. And uh, yeah, it's, it's only increasing by five bucks, but you're gonna be getting a lot for that $5. And that $5 is not actually gonna be an increase in revenue at all. So we're not actually increasing our profits, <laughs> really. Um, we're just increasing the quality of everything and that does cost more. So that's going to include the price of the pivots. That's going to include the price of having that custom tool that helps you assemble the Vulp in the package for every Vulp. Um, that's going to include especially the bushings. That's kind of the biggest deal there is because the thing to know is that with bushings and with any balisong like that, um, the whole point is to get rid of as much play as possible. And to do that, you're talking about thousands and thousands of an inch. Like you're talking about very, very, very small fractions of an inch every single time. And so 
uh, that gets more and more expensive because the machining required is more and more accurate. So with the bushings, to make them as accurate as possible, that's also one of the things that's going to cost more money. But, uh, oh, and then the final thing is now that you have all of those really accurate parts, it will also cost more to assemble because each individual Volp, which do need to be assembled by hand, by the way, um, each one will take more time for that assembly. So yeah, that's that's the process. We've got uh, so much stuff happening, but uh, it's very exciting. You know, we're, we're, we're getting there. There's more stuff happening. I'm kind of like, I really didn't want it to go up in price, but we did a lot of talking and figured out what we needed to improve and then talked about like how much that improvement would actually cost. And so I'm pretty happy with, you know, it's only going up by five bucks. It's really not a lot of money more. And it still is in that really, really good budget area. I, I told them that we really can't push it you know, price-wise any much or any more past this period. So if there are any uh, adjustments to be made in the future, you know, we will try to make them. But as I said, I'm trying to keep this thing as cheap as possible. And so, you know, it'll be high quality, but we still got to keep it cheap. That is the primary goal here is to make it as good as possible for the price. So the price is paramount. Anyways, yeah, that's what's going on with the Volt. That's what we're improving. I hope you guys enjoyed this little behind the scenes look on uh, what we've got going on. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. See you later. Peace.